Dave, uh, you're back again. Thank you. Yeah, it's great <laughs> to be here. Thanks, yeah. Mike. Yeah, I was going to say you're a glutton for punishment, <laughs> but I know this is a subject that is close to your heart, hearing the voice of God. Very much so. Last week, we talked especially about reading Scripture yeah. and listening for how God is going to speak to us through that. Yeah. And you actually suggested to, to pray a simple prayer. Mm -hmm. Tell us that prayer again. <laughs> the it's, prayer. it's not a magic prayer. It is formula. not a magic prayer. Just say, God, could you speak to me through your word? That would be it. Speak to me. I'm listening. Some kind of form of that. <laughs> because God uses his word. His Holy Spirit yeah. takes his word. There, there's another part of us, though, that we say, oh, I want something more mystical. Mm -hmm. And certainly God speaks in, in a variety of ways. You can't read the Bible and realize that he does, that he speaks through <laughs> angels. Uh, yeah. He speaks through the leaders of the church. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute, because yeah. how important, if I'm listening for God's voice, to seek out spiritual input? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, because it takes some humility for some people to think, wow, I'm actually going to listen to somebody else tell me what God says. But uh, God loves, he get, honors humility. And especially if we're afraid they're going to tell us what we don't want to hear. <laughs> no, so true, yeah. so true. But as a communicator, as a, as a pastor up front, as you well know, uh, it is, uh, it's so much fun because you get down after speaking and somebody would come and say, God said something to me and you said this and they're telling me. <laughs> and I can't have, remember. I have no idea. <laughs> I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> but God spoke. Uh, through other people, which is fascinating. I remember this one woman, she, uh, she came to me after the service and she took me out, uh, outside. She'd just visited the church. She said, okay, who told you? Who told you about my life? <laughs> I said, I don't know you. She said, no, everything you said was exactly what's happening in my life. I go, no, that's, that's God. And uh, to come in, in the community, in the gathering, uh, to be able to listen to somebody that uh, God will speak through, you just need to be open to that. I like that phrase, you need to be open to that. Yeah, yeah. Why is it that we're not open? <laughs> and sometimes it can be when somebody's dating somebody and they're, you know they're yeah. in a wrong relationship and they, they don't want your great advice. Yeah, no, that's... Why is that? That's very true because we're... I, I think part of it, uh, people believe that God is going to be very heavy-handed, very uh, uh, harsh on them. Uh, even in his correction, God is so gentle. Yeah, he's beautifully gentle. And uh, so I, I, I know some people come, cross their arms, uh, but the gentleness and the love of God open them up uh, to be able to hear the message that actually God's life is the best life for you. I have a sense that as we're, even though we're taping this program, mm -hmm. that there's some people listening and they're really sincerely mm -hmm. saying, God, I need to know what's next. And I can't encourage people enough to seek out godly leadership. Amen. It happened to me when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on a missions trip and I was ready to leave college and stay there and keep working. It was in yeah, the crow's yeah. nest past. And I came back and talked to my pastor who really cared for me. I was about 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mike, you need to finish your education and get fully equipped and then go if God is still directing you there. And, you know, God was, just, I think, more than anything, just trying to see if I had that willing spirit. Yeah, yeah. But you try to listen for his voice. And to have the humility to come to people who have gone before to listen, that's, that's tough for some young people. Talk to me about another area. Yeah. It's the supernatural, like dreams, <laughs> visions. Does God speak that way? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, oh, very much so. At uh, my church, we call them words, thoughts, and pictures. So somebody might have a word for you, a thought, or a picture. And I've received pictures from people that have been amazingly accurate. In fact, just... You're starting to sound nuts. Okay, so never explain this. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to say that, okay? <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Yeah. I remember um, I was uh, speaking out at, at an event uh, outside of the country, and uh, a young lady came up to me and said, I think God gave, uh, has a picture for you. I'm thinking, great, you know, I'll, I'll take it and pray about it because I hear God too. And she drew a picture of balloons and she said, um, God is proud of your balloons and he's going to send more. And to the average person, they go, huh, huh. But to me, at my church, every time somebody says yes to Jesus and comes to Christ and gives their life to him, we put up a balloon. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, so she gave me this picture filled with balloons. God's proud of your balloons. He's going to bring more. I wept like crazy. Uh, that was just purely from God, a vision from God that somebody had given her for me. And it lined up. Lined up. And it wasn't kooky. 
No, it wasn't kooky. No. It was confirmed, and uh, I didn't have to bring that one to God much. <laughs> Appreciate you sharing that story. <laughs> yeah. You're going to come back for one more. We're going to talk more about hearing God's voice with uh, Dr. Dave Overholt. Thanks, Dave. Thanks.